Hey everyone and welcome back to another summer day on the farm. Well technically it's not summer for a couple more days. We are hauling manure out. Work smarter, not harder. In the past, we've loaded up a manure spreader a load at a time. We can get a whole lot more in the dump truck all at once. So the barn cows get a daily clean out and a pile accumulates there every day, morning and night. Out here in the pasture, it's a little different story. We have to scrape the ground clear to clean up manure and spent feed that is on the ground. And we just push it up into piles so that it sits here and composts until you're past muddy, wet, snowy weather. It's a good day to do it except for the tremendous heat. It's supposed to be like 90, 90 something today. Humid as heck, we got a storm last night, but it softened this up enough to be able to push it. So where we gave them like round bales and let them eat here during the winter and then use it as bedding. Um, normally we would feed them always in the containers, but when it gets very cold, we try to give them a, a ground bed. So if they weigh some to not lose the body heat and lose body condition, that's a good way to do it. So the auto car dump truck is hauling. That is one of three auto cars that we own. We have a yellow auto car. If you look through the videos, we had a red auto car that's more or less a parts truck. Um, the transmission is removed from it. But other than that, it's a complete truck. So cleanup day happens here all the time. The hay is drying. It's not a hay making day. Hi bird. Oh, you're beautiful. So it's a good day to get rid of this. So the backhoe pushes it into piles. It's gonna scrape the ground all clean like this. Allow this grass to kind of grow up. We've only got three steers and a bull in the pasture this year. So the green um, isn't gonna any, get any greener as dry and hot as it's been. Um, they've been nibbling it down a little bit every day and then supplementing with uh, round bales also. So we're just going to keep loading this out today. I'll show you some footage of the auto car running in and out, the backhoe loading it up and pushing it into piles. So when we do work like this, I'm the gatekeeper. I am literally running the gate, uh, open and closed to let him in and out our rhubarb patch and squash patch are nearby. So that's what I'm working on in between him going in and out. It's got to get done and it's nice to do it a little bit at a time. This is where we had, I showed earlier in the season, our round bales parked last year and since the grass wasn't going to come up, it's a great spot for a garden because it gets full sun, plenty of drainage, and it's close proximity to the barn for top dressing the whole garden. So George was all gung-ho about it in the beginning and he kind of lost steam. So mom and Murdoch have taken it over. So we tried a few different varieties of seeds this year and saved some seeds. I got some really interesting seeds um, from some gourds and pumpkins from a roadside stand and saved those. It is a great way for um, boosting up your seed library or sharing. His carrots don't really seem to be coming up. Um, off brands, trying the cheap ones that say like 59 cents, uh, they're not they're not working, we're losing time. And our woodchuck friend has showed up, I just noticed. We gotta always watch that. We packed it full and filled it full of rocks. I'll have to move that live trap over. Uh, let's see, we've got cantaloupes growing. Uh, just a couple of days they're gonna pop up. Watermelons, and I've been noticing some deer tracks here. And we're close proximity to the bunny dens also. They like to hide amongst the pine trees. So that's the reason for the live trap. I don't want to have any sprung traps around here because of the kids, obviously. We've got a couple different varieties of lettuce coming up. A few random sunflowers here and there. A row of potatoes. A row of weeds that I'm working on. It's real easy to not get to this and just get the easy weeds. <laughs> Murdoch got ahead of me with George and they planted a row of pumpkins and these two got planted about a week and a half later. And then we went through and added some of those birdhouse type gourds that are 
um, kind of a yellowish whitish, some green lumpy squash pumpkins. I forget the names of all of them because I didn't grow them. I seed saved them. And then another row of those that I had saved from someone else's roadside stand. I wrote them all down. Some were like yellow lumpy warty. They're really great for porch displays, so it's nice to do that. A couple sunflowers coming up here, a row of rhubarb, a row of asparagus is done. If you mow it down, it'll come back up, but you get sick of it in the spring pretty quick. Got a random tomato plant that wanted to grow on its own. Don't know why he chose there. No one planted a seed unless it fell off someone's clothes. But this is what I am working on today. We'd like to get it all completely done. It's nice to be able to set up a sprinkler and just let it water that way. We've been watering each individual plant because we're by here with the garden hose for pumping water for the cows anyway. So for about two years, we had been loading up a manure spreader parked in the pen, and that works pretty good, the best way for us. We had tried one year having it parked along the fence and loading it from the inside, and we thought it's just a lot easier to pull it in. Doing it this way saves us a lot of time. He's getting a lot of bulk out all at once. And what he's doing is moving this to a secondary location to have just a separate compost pile instead of spreading it straight from here to the pastures because this is the time of year that we want the pastures growing and this is going to just turn into beautiful dirt for uh, top dressing changing basically the soil we've got real sandy areas and he'll spread this out there he has in the past just straight from the pasture and it has improved greatly there is always a lot of seed in here from going through the animals. So clover seeds, alfalfa seeds, grass seeds, um, including any weeds. So it's good to let it heat up and steam out in a compost pile. And then maybe the weeds won't live through that. I'm not sure. So we found by adding our own compost to our fields, we haven't had to have the input of buying chemical fertilizer. And even though we're not certified organic, we have been practicing organic for years. All of our hay goes to our animals, we sell hay. And that means something to people, even if you're not certified organic, because they understand the expense of a yearly certification and they see what's going on on the farm. So he's dumping this up our farm lane about a half a mile in a nice spot. That way we don't have problems with flies up close in the early composting stages. So if you watched our video from last year, we basically got uh, two gardens going this year and it was originally the pig pen and we had pigs in the barns for years and cows and we spread our south field with that pig manure and it is the best growing per acre hay field that we have because of that pig manure. They put everything into it, they dumped their water every day and they pooped in it and their whole pen was just a soupy, swampy mess. It's fantastic. So we've been doing top dressing of these close gardens with chicken manure. This year, they're going to get some cow manure. 
So that's the main reason for organic practices. What our cows eat, we eat. Either directly or indirectly through the meat or through the garden. So that garden that was pigs is our best producing garden. Always has been. We've had it in various spots just in the yard in the beginning years and then moved it to there to keep the deer out of it because we had lost so many pumpkins due to deer eating. This uh, garden has had um, some deer in it and nibbled it down. So I just took my seeds that I saved and I just save them like this. So this is like the lumpy green one. Uh, Musky de Provence. It's a French decorative pumpkin. I put some on that I saved. Large orange blue ribbon pumpkins. So if I had some hills that initially didn't take off or that they've already eaten, um, it looks like out of my watermelons I've got one watermelon plant left. Uh, this one, little decorative pumpkins. The kids like to draw faces on those. If I could find out the name or if I bought the seed, I always label it and I label it with the years because those seeds can be good for many years in storage. So this garden is real dry and compacted and lots of gravel in it from having it become the garden that it is the way that it has. We um, didn't plow it or turn it over deeply. Trey used his free rototiller that he got and was able to till it up that way. But it's a lot of garden hoeing uh, and everything going on with it. So this is about to get all top dressed later this evening, maybe tomorrow morning, depending on the temperatures. Um, and we're going to get some more flowering things going on in here to help deter some of the deer.
So just to show you, in one of our fields, they're raking and baling today between the manure and volunteer seeds growing again that just get knocked off the plant as you're cutting hay. It really is great. There's little bits of clover seed in here, a little bit of alfalfa, and it all just keeps rejuvenating itself. you look in an area like this where there was a woodchuck hole at one point there is seeds all over here and with a little bit of rain supposed to be getting rain in a couple of days what the birds don't take away maybe the rain will give it life to grow20,000 feet for round bales is $35. And the beginning of the season, I bought some at 
tractor supply for $32.99 and they've gone up to, I think it said $37.99. There's a Rural King, um, a couple of them, uh, in Michigan, and it was worth driving to because I needed some other things. Uh, $24.99 for two rolls of their baler twine. So when you're making hay and you're doing things organic, you want to keep those inputs low because people aren't wanting to pay you extra money for the cost of the twine. Last year there was a, a hike in the diesel fuel. Uh, you know, you have waste or rain damage, so we have tarps to keep everything covered up. We do everything we can to keep those costs down. And, you know, applying that manure on the field, not buying the fertilizer, saving on the twine, um, saving on not buying a building, you know, everything that we're doing. Um, we will wrap some bales for our own use and put some of this up on a better day. Right now, we want them to, you know, have that curing time or drying time to make sure there's no sweating in the bale wrap. So I hope this helped you save some money. Every year, the gardening, the manure clean out always ends up leading to fence row trimming, cleaning out under the edge so that we're not getting any excess growth, shorting out the electric fence, which it's, hard not to do that at this point because we've added a third wire near the bottom so we are behind on our string trimming for doing that it's a good week dry to get to all these little jobs a little bit at a time remember it's hot don't overwork yourself you can see I'm totally flushed just take lots of water take lots of breaks cool down when you can as I was watering my new seeds I kept cooling myself down with the faucet too at the same time you got to do what you can at a reasonable pace in the summer. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you like and subscribe. Remember to hit the thumbs up for that like, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.